Hey guys, and welcome to the AVA Direct live stream. I'm Shannon. I'm Joe. And today we have all kinds of cool stuff to talk about with you. Do um, we? Do we though? Well, cool to me. I mean, I made part of the list and fair, so did you. Fair so. enough. We did put a decent amount of time into the topic, so we think it's cool. But you're saying do we, that means you're questioning your own topics you picked out. No, I just, I, I like to question as much as I can because you really want to look into the authority integrity of things. So. The authority integrity of things. The authority would you, would you like and to integrity. Back, would you like to rewind that for a second? No. Come on, can we just back. Can we proceed? No, no, no. Can we proceed, please? Ni hao ma. Just go. Tony oh. Ma. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> you did not. Just. I was just going to smack you. He's, like, he's just like this right now. It's okay. We'll get over it. Our CEO is sitting eight feet away, and Joe says something like that, and he just goes, It's all right. It's fine. It's for entertainment. It's we're okay. Good. It's okay. I promise we're going to have a job tomorrow. Or, Tuesday. <laughs> By the way, we're closed Monday. Just, uh, just Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Happy Memorial Day. We're going to be playing PUBG and all that fun stuff. Let's see. Uh, first, let's start with some of the early stuff. LOL, CE CEO is better than yours. We will explain that shortly. That is actually absolutely true. And we're not saying that to kiss his ass because he's sitting right there. Um, ah, buongiorno. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. I cannot. Barub. How do you, how do you pronounce that, Joe? Uh, take, I, a, I, take a shot. Where is it? The guy who says bonjour. Bonjour. Barouge. Barouge. Uh, Bar I, I apologize. Yeah, butchering I, I, I'm that, not going to do that. I feel bad. Butchering it pretty badly. Sorry, but hello. Yeah. Damn, slow as a Windows update. What's up, James? Uh, no, we just have to have time to do all the stupid crap we shouldn't do on screen before we go live with you guys. So. Yes, this is true. <laughs> so now that we've got some of the intros out of the way, um, what closed Monday? Yeah, we try to give our uh, guys some time to spend time with their family, you know, especially during major holidays and whatnot. And we figure if you guys want an awesome gaming PC, you're going to contact us anyway. So. It is a time to remember. I can't remember what I ate yesterday. I can't remember what I did yesterday at this point. I mean, when you have days as hectic as we do, do you really, does that surprise you at all? I flew. In any way? I flew to St. Louis and back, and my arms are tired, because that's not an old joke at why, all. Why your arms? I guess, ah, ah. Got it. Okay. Thanks for the illustration. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm sure you could have done a better bird noise, but that's fine. That's okay. We'll wait till later. Okay, so uh, <laughs> first things first, one of the first things I actually want to talk about was uh, a 1050 3 gig, because that's reasons. That's an extra gig. It's an extra gig, and uh, uh, not for crypto miners, because they uh, reduce some of the memory performance because reasons. 10% uh, faster than the existing 1050 2 gig model. In what way? <laughs> because it has more texture units, 48 versus 40. Uh, Okay. People from using this card for mining so that you can get a budget gaming card. So now how about we fix the problem with all the higher end cards? Yeah. Or better yet, just reduce the MSRP again? Yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath. You'll probably die. But. It, well, with these, with these card prices, is that far from what we want at this point? I mean, I just want to go like. I mean, it's better than what it's been, but I kind of feel like in, in a way as a consumer, I kind of feel like I've been ripped off and reprogrammed in a, in a way of thinking of what the graphics card prices are supposed to be. You know, because it's it's creating a false sense of satisfaction because rather than bringing the pricing back down to where it was, it's it's cheaper than it was, so we should be grateful. Ooh, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Don't look at a free horse's teeth. Though. I will never check a free horse's teeth because the horse is free. So don't <laughs> check the teeth. Oh, my God. What's up, John? Hey, John. How's it going? I'm pretty sure he'd say okay if he wasn't like on a delay with most of our streams. By the Sorry. way, we are, this is our first time multi-streaming, so or simulcasting. So we're going to uh, Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, along with Bookface, as you're see probably seeing this on. Um, if you're not a fan already of our YouTube, Mixer, Twitch, obviously you're on our Facebook, otherwise you probably wouldn't be here. Mm. If we happen to pop up for you and you don't like us, please do, because <laughs> we're going to be doing all kinds of silly crap like this every week. Um, now, when it comes to the 1053 gig, just to segue back onto that and uh, hopefully put this train back on the tracks, uh, my question, I actually, by the way, if you see me looking down, we actually have kind of a script, not a script because I don't like scripts, but notes. we have talking point notes, and instead of me looking at my laptop, I decided paper was better because I don't like trees. Well, yeah, I was going to say, let's just unnecessarily kill trees when we have two laptops sitting on our desk. Makes complete sense. Well, if you remember the last live stream, if you remember the last live stream, my laptop's like, nope, I'm out, and well, sent a sad face, and I'm like, oh, sure, hey. it is. It is kind of <laughs> ironic though, because we have dead trees on top of dead trees here, so dead trees for days. I'm pretty sure this is like press board or something. I'm not sure. I mean, it's still so board. It's, it's dead tree dust. I, I don't guess know. it's compacted dead tree dust, but anyway, 
That, that's morbid as hell. Let's move on to the NVIDIA MX150 Ernie, mobile GPUs. what's up, buddy? Well, real quick, I, I do have a question about the 1050, and this is something I'd like to ask you guys, along with you, Joe, see what, see what you think, is do we really need another mainstream splinter in the market? No. Because I feel like we're getting uh, no. in a farther stretch between our GPU releases. Like, we're just, we keep extending it out. We keep... Uh, we keep, we keep just like extending it, making it longer and longer between card releases where it used to be like in lockstep, like every year or two years, you would have the top end cards would be being shuffled out. And now I feel like it's kind of a sign of complacency. Like there's no real threat in the market yet. Yeah, I think it's a stalling tactic. I, so think, I think either they had intended to come out with products sooner and it's taking a lot longer, you know. So let's be, this, let's be direct. I mean, we are partners, AMD, NVIDIA, everyone, Intel, but uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're not gonna pull any punches in this live stream. So when it comes to it, I mean, I f my my feeling is that this is a sign of complacency by Nvidia, or even worse, yeah. even even more so, is maybe they don't want to show their cards until they see what the seven nanometer uh, Vega, which has been which Lisa announced, uh, what was it a few weeks ago? Yep. She said seven nanometer was coming for Ryzen along with uh, along with a Vega refresh, and maybe they want to see where that power level lies before they drop the new card, so that they don't put themselves in a precar precarious position and potentially have to spin something up similar to what Intel did with, uh, when, or what we believe they did with uh, Ryzen launch. Yeah. It's possible that that could be the thing, I mean. I mean, it would be smart, but at the same time, just communicate. NVIDIA's kind of been a company over the, 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 the last decade or so, at least in my opinion, that they very selectively choose what they want to tell consumers, which is more, not really any different than any other company, but they don't really give useful information. Um, they just release new product, when they have it available, and it just feels like it's to satisfy a certain crowd or a particular individual or type of user. But the, what's the relevancy of, of an extra one gig? Like, sure, it's going to satisfy crypto mining, but hasn't crypto mining kind of dropped off the map a little no, bit? No, no, no. This is actually to get away from crypto mining. They want this card not to be used by crypto miners. Okay, well... So they want these budget cards. So that means, like, literally, they're like, here, we're going to neuter the memory bandwidth, but we're going to give you uh, more right. texture units for 48 versus 40, just to make sure that you have that, you know, performance delta where you can be a little closer to 1050 Ti. Gotcha. Well, so, I, mean, I don't know. That do makes really no sense. Then what, what, why do we need an in-between 1050 to 1050 Ti? By the way, since your brother's ignoring you, hi, Marine, because uh, Joe is insensitive and inconsiderate. Very. So. Sorry. I mean, you've known this. Sorry, not long? sorry. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but hello. Also, uh, we actually have a very interesting question. Alex, you over there? You might want to listen to this one. This is funny. Really loving the changes in streams. I've been a little out of the loop, but the company went through changes and has a new CEO, right? Uh, Alex, how long have you been the CEO here? Like 15 years? No. This is, this is the man, this is the OG CEO, okay? The OG CEO. This, this, is, this is the man that started it all, selling PCs outside of trucks, going to trade shows in the 90s when that was the only way to, to get your hands years. on a PC. I mean, I remember my brother back in the day coming home with Doom in a big letterhead box with floppy disks, letterhead? right? You know, letterhead size of Fox. It's a Doom, you know, the Doom ring on doom. it. Doom. And uh, yeah, I, I remember it clear as day. And you had to go to places like that and conventions to get that kind of stuff because at the time, ID was not a big developer. It was like a handful of dudes that, that made this all in, in basic programming language. So when all that was going on, that's, that's what this man was doing. And he's essentially built something from nothing. And that's not easily done. And so. now we're helping them build something from something. Yes, we're taking something, we're building something. We're out. taking something and we're making video out of something. Like Legos. Like digital Legos. Mm. Um, D Legos. Uh, I, I can't even. I, I just, nope. Um, so don't. <laughs> uh, let's see. Wow. Uh, Chad has a good point. He says, isn't that what, uh, he says, isn't that what the TI cards are for? Abs uh, well, absolutely, normally, but normally TI cards are when they want to extend the lifespan and they kind of drop a few more things in it. Yep. Now, uh, wow, I just can't even. <laughs> uh, next, uh, more fun from our friends from NVIDIA. Uh, MX150 mobile GPUs. Joe? Uh, uh, why, dude? Intel HD graphics. That's all I got to say. Like, that's... That is more than enough to satisfy an end user's needs when it's basic or even if you need to support multiple displays. So why, I don't understand why NVIDIA feels like they need to compete unless 
Well, you're, you're you have at... the Intel Ryzen thing that they did recently where the new Coffee Lake, I don't know, HK, whatever whatever the hell they're calling it. It's it's a CPU with like a Vega GPU built on it, and it's actually pretty powerful. So maybe they feel like they have to uh, compete in that uh, that really entry-level department because they've never really had to like really push that low cost. And now I think they're giving force in that position because let's face it, Intel HD has not really... What are, you, what are you playing on that, Minesweeper? Yeah. Speaking of Minesweeper, doesn't it look like Alex is kind of playing with Minesweeper with the camera controls? I mean, that's okay. He can. <laughs> he's like, he's like, doot, doot, I mean, that'd, pro doot, doot. that'd probably be a really good game for him to get, get into, especially based on the later topic, which we'll tap more on later. Oh, yeah. Well, what's that, Car Sweeper? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Minecraft. It's Minecraft. Mm. Okay. Do you want to take this one? That's actually kind of a fun Okay. One. Yeah, so new 4K display is coming out. Finally. Um, it's only been delayed and delayed and delayed since last year. So the real question I have for you, Shannon, is do you feel that these 4K displays, given their HDR capabilities and the refresh rates of G-Sync, are worth even purchasing at this point in time? Well, first of all, I want to point out something. Joe wears glasses, and there's a reason for that, because he went one whole subject down below what I called out, but that's okay. It's okay. Now to your question. Um, do I feel they're worth it? This is, this is a tough one because the cost is so high. It's one of those things where... Anyone who's an enthusiast like us, we're going to pay that premium because, first of all, it's badass new tech, which means we're definitely going to want the newest and greatest. I mean, me and you were both on X299. Yeah. How many how many people could easily, how many people are still running like X58, X79? Yeah, but I kind of feel like the X299 upgrade for me was just kind of a situation of circumstance. I, I was just waiting to upgrade and realistically wanted to upgrade to something that would make a difference. And having a 4790K based on a lot of the stuff that I started to do, it made sense to me. Dropping two however much it's going to be purportedly on these new monitors, especially when a single card can't even push 4K at those refresh rates. If, I guess you're the, you're the end user that wants the latest and greatest tech and you're just going to dump money onto it. Okay, fine. I, I'm that way too in some aspects. But for me personally, I'm probably going to wait until we get better cards that can push 4K at that refresh rate to even consider purchasing. Well, that's that's the thing. I mean, I feel like the tech always forces the evolution of hardware. So this being out there, you could, w there's an argument for the future, not even, but being future ready, you know that car, they're, in, <laughs> NVIDIA's not gonna support a project of pushing like a display like this with HDR capabilities without a plan to release a GPU to push it. That's true, so but you, you could may, also say the same thing for SLI though. They pushed SLI as an option, but developers were like, no, this is too much of a hassle. Oh, Grady Vision, oh, I'm sorry, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? Oh. Dude, dude those, glasses were, those glasses were awesome, come on. <laughs> the, the perspectives were totally unrealistic when you have three monitors around you and things are popping out, but then the perspectives are skewed on your left and right. Things, but are, things are popping out. There you pop, go. Things are popping out all over the place. <laughs> Smack me in the face. Uh, real quick, uh, from Twitch, we actually have a viewer. Uh, we have Jay, who normally watches us here. He's on uh, Twitch saying, uh, Woot. Hi, Jay. Uh, apparently, he's happy that he doesn't have to watch us on Bookface, and I'm sure there's reasons for that, including, you know, the fact that, you know, they try to mine all your data because reasons. Yeah. Um... So you want to get to your subject since I jumped right over it? No, apparently actually, it's fine. Apparently well, it's, it's fine. not something that I cared about because I just saw that yeah. like, nope and then jumped to the Well, next. you saw the brand, and that's why I even said nope, but still. Um, first, I feel like there's some other things we had brought up with the HDR monitors. I feel like this is pushing toward the, and I love the name, BFGD. So What does that stand for? Big friendly gaming display. Oh, yes. You make friends with a nice gaming display. Do it's all a, sorts of things with you. It's like, uh, it's, like when you, it's like when you used to have the, um, what was it, the BFG gun in, uh, in Doom? Yeah. Just the one that you just shoot and like everything dies. Second Doom reference of the evening. I like this. So, uh, yeah. I, mean, I should have worn my Doom shirt. It could be a big friendly gaming display because you probably need a friend after you purchase one, considering how expensive it's going to be. If you're married, they'll probably leave you. Uh, your friend is probably the suicide hotline if you're spending that kind of money on a monitor, probably. Uh, yeah. Well, then again, I have an a Acer X34, so I probably have no room to talk. Yeah, I mean, it's a pot calling the kettle black, isn't it? Hey, it's a kettle. I mean, come on. Um, okay, there is another piece of hardware that I found interesting. However, uh, not to say my pure disdain for the brand is going to kill my image of it, but Core X, and we're not talking about the CPU, but by Razer, the people that make mice that are horribly uncomfortable and don't work well. Oh, and, and the headset base range is just amazing in all their models, let me tell you. It's really awesome because they fit really well when they fall apart so they don't fit on your head anymore. I call that I call that extreme ventilation mode. Oh yeah, and then and then their cords that lead to the ear cups to the PC have what's called like cord memory, where no matter how often you try <laughs> to, you know, adjust the cord, no matter how much you try to untangle it, it always remembers that it was crunched up three weeks ago and just reverts back to its natural state. Great job, Razor. 
Ch Chad actually replied just so, you're, just so you know, you're, you're lucky if SLI can push that refresh rate. You're lucky if SLI works. <laughs> I know. I right? mean, Chad, that's where, we, we've experienced this. That's kind of the reason why I brought it up because Chad and I were talking about that a while ago, how it's like there was such a huge agenda to push multiple cards and, and NVIDIA was a huge proponent of SLI that they were they were putting their brand on boards that supported SLI back in the Core 2 and Core 2 quad days. And for what? For developers to go, this just isn't worth it anymore. We're done. Well, what's great about this is this kind of segues toward what Ernie asked. Ernie was like, what's your favorite headset for gaming? Well, as you know now, anything not other, Razer. Anything other than Razer, thanks. Uh, we okay, had, thanks, I've, bye. I've had, some good, I've had some good experience with uh, Astro. I actually have A50s and uh, Logitech as well. Makes some really badass headsets. And what do you know? Logitech bought Astro. So, I mean, two of wow. my favorites are like right there. And yours, what, what is yours, Joe? I don't want to answer for you. Headsets? <clears throat> it's a Razer. I... I I disown you. Yeah, I, well, I'm out. Well, here's why I bought into it and why I'm not happy. You bought into the hype is what you're saying. I bought it. I bought it. No, I didn't buy into the hype. I bought into the specifications. So I dropped big bucks on one of the HD Omega Eclaro cards back in the day. Actually, correction. I got it for Christmas from somebody who loves me. And Did that person say hi and you ignored him? Yes. A little bit. Do you regret that decision, Maureen? No. The, that person <laughs> is actually... Um, Doing a lot of work as we speak at the moment, so oh, geez. I, I won't name names. But uh, <laughs> the headset is supposedly supposed to have 7.1 surround sound based on the fact that it has seven separate drivers in each cup. Uh, drivers ranging from about that size to even smaller. And I will give Razer credit. The first headset worked great because I'm a bass hound, and so I love anything that has deep, clear bass, and those headsets did it. The second one, I feel like I was pulled in based on the version of the first headset because it was great. And the second one is just awful. Like the moments in PUBG when the planes fly over and you kind of hear like the hustle and bustle. <laughs> and, uh, I'm sorry, my, we, we just blew out Brooke's eardrums probably. Sorry, <laughs> Brooke, sorry, <laughs> my bad. Um, they, they crackle and pop as to where the first ones didn't. So now I feel like um, I have $150 set of paperweights that I'm not happy with, but I'm forced to use because you know you need that immersiveness when you play games like that. And I just don't know where to go. Chad swears by Steel Series headsets, like well, up and down. I've tried them, and you know what? I have a, I have a really big ass head. I have a big, big dome, and I when I put you. them on, those things were like, eh, it was like squeezing my head. So maybe if you're not like a gigantic guy like me, the Steel Series headsets they sounded good, but I didn't like feeling like I was like Andre the Giant was squeezing my head. I'm like, nope. You should come out with your own brand of headphones, and you can call them like Slagathor. I also think it is B A H, but well, we'll just. <laughs> Okay. Now, basically, but now that we're done like destroying Razer, apparently, uh, basically they came out with uh, the Core X, which is an external GPU enclosure for 300 bucks, which is actually cutting the cost quite significantly yes. compared to uh, offerings we've seen out there. Wow, something great they did. Especially with, with what's inside of it, because it comes with a 650 watt PSU, and it actually delivers. What's cool about this that I find really neat is in one of the reasons I'm actually bringing this up is they actually had the forethought to put a type C connector that pushes 120 Watts out of it. So since this is actually Mac compatible as well, because you know, everyone loves to game on a Mac because you know, there's a lot of games compatible there. The performance I is so Sim much City. better. I love Sim City. Yeah. Great. The Sims, such a great series when based on an Apple operating system. <laughs> Absolutely. Super smooth, silky smooth, no drivers needed. Just works. But if you happen to have one of those newest laptops that charges by type C, you can actually, that connector will push out the power to charge your laptop along with being an external GPU enclosure. So if you buy, like for maybe a direct, a ultra thin laptop with a Thunderbolt 3 connector, you can connect that, have an external GPU, pretty much any GPU will fit because it's 650 watt power supply. And you could have awesome gaming performance off of an ultra thin PC that you can travel with and do whatever. And if you can find a way, which I definitely would if I had it, a ultra thin, I would pretty much put it in my check bag and take the GPU with me just so I could game anywhere. I mean, could you imagine the hassle, though, if they actually wanted to check your bag and having to explain what that box is? Have you ever seen what they do to bags? I could only imagine what happened to yeah. a graphic card inside one of those boxes. Yeah, yeah. I carried a bunch of PC parts with me in travel at one point, and they were all sealed in the box. And they asked if they could break them open, and I said, sir, I would really prefer you not because those are sensitive materials. And they're like, we can't let you on the plane with this graphics card. Cool. ESD safety, folks. Important. It's so out, important that I decided to miss my flight as a result. It turns out that TSA has no idea what ESD means. Speaking of that, actually, uh, yesterday I flew out to our uh, friends at Boeing to do some on-site work, and uh, oh. they decided to confiscate one screwdriver out of all the screwdrivers I took. How long was it? Because show, show, reasons. Show us how long it was. How long was it? No, why? They, they, it, mind you, TSA rules is seven inches. 
It's I, it was a foot. T- TSA, I was I was TSA told a foot. can take a full seven inches. Can I they? showed them. I showed them, and they're can like, they, "Sorry, we can't allow this on the plane." And I'm like, "I have a limited amount of time to reach my flight. I guess I'm losing that screwdriver." No, see, that was kind of I. I needed to. It was fight or flight at that point, and I fought and lost. And it just it. It's ridiculous. They told I feel me like the Rocky theme should be going while you do that. I mean, you got a pink hoodie. Let's do this. Either way, though, <laughs> that was a punch out reference. By the way, I, I'd get it. <laughs> uh, that's kind of weird that they would confiscate that screwdriver unless they thought it was like a weapon based item because they told me it's a screwdriver. What are you going to do? I mean, did they at least give you the option to like put it in cargo bay so you can bring it on you or, or bring it on with you in the plane or did they just tell you flat out I you didn't, couldn't take it with I you? didn't have a bag to check. I had just my backpack on. And you couldn't go back because you would have missed your flight. Yes. I thought you were always early. I was, but the TSA opens at a certain time at Cleveland Airport. Yeah, okay, yeah, blame Cleveland. Everybody else does. Well, it's kind of deserves that just saying <laughs> at least we're not detroit well it's true we can drink the water here oh oh, oh. hey we got pushed oh, into flint michigan <laughs> oh, oh. we probably should just get oh goodness so okay full so, gaming performance of thunderbolt you say full gaming performance in a with, thunderbolt with thunderbolt let me elaborate to make sure full, full gaming performance in terminology. thunderbolt because thunderbolt does things um wow um wow Ratings on 650-watt PSU, you know what? I don't know. Actually, it's a branded PSU from uh, uh, that shows Razer's logo, which means they probably went with someone. I imagine they went with someone rather ch- rather inexpensive. I don't want to say cheap because that makes it sound bad, but it's probably rather inexpensive from what I saw from the video and the pictures I could see of it. It's uh, it, it doesn't look like an uber high-end unit, but at the end of the day, if it's powering a graphics card, as long as it has decent ripple and, uh, like suppre- and proper protections in place, it should work just fine because 650 watts... Normally will power any pretty much any graphics card, honestly, 650, 750, along with a system. So just powering a graphics card, I think you'd be safe with it. Um, um, also, well, vodka and OJ screwdriver. Yes, thank you. Core X's compatibility better than older ones, like Thunderbolt. <laughs> yes, well, it's Thunderbolt three. So yeah, basically, Core X's compatibility is better than the older ones because it is Thunderbolt three, and it's a compa- it's compatible across the range from Mac to PC. Just as long as you have a Thunderbolt 3 port. If you have just a USB port without the Thunderbolt logo that's Type-C, then uh, you're out of luck because that ain't going to work. I mean, that, that, is a le- that is a legitimate concern, though. Thunderbolt compatibility has not been the greatest. Uh, but Thunderbolt it's 3 has actually been much better. It's so not I, like so the previous ones. Yeah, I've, I've heard good things, and it as it relates to the power supply concern, I think, I mean, come on. You know people are going to bust that thing open and replace it with a quality power supply anyway. So really all you're I'm paying sure. for is the PCB, right, that it's, that's going to plug into, and that's about it, and the shell. The okay. case. You well, pay three hundred dollars for a case. Maureen said it wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. And you got it Kevin. was the one-armed man. <laughs> and then you got Kevin quoting me. He's like, "Mega Dome, Shin and Rob." <laughs> okay, well there we go. Um, seven inches versus one foot at TSA. Yes, I love that. I love that Kevin's doing airplane references because me and him love all the old crap like that. Um, still haven't seen airplane. Sean's gonna punch me in the throat later, but I'm I still... disowning you twice now. That's ridiculous. Fine, I'll take care of it. Oh, Sandy, I love you too, buddy. Um, the only screwdriver you can have on a plane. Well, that's not wrong. I mean, oh, yeah, vodka and OJ? Is vodka that what he said? OJ. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. At least you got it, I mean. It's not wrong. Okay, now, there is one more, or I think one more hardware thing, is uh, recently uh, Micron, Intel and Micron announced a par- uh, partnership or co-op on QLC, so quad-level uh, cell NAND. Now, one thing, and I'm sure John's in here, so he's probably going to butcher me later. Smack him on camera. I don't know. I have HR people that might see this, and me smacking Joe is probably normal off camera, but not on camera. I mean, feel free. I'm really not worried about it. <laughs> I just, I can't promise that I know exactly where that's going to lead. Do we have curtains? I'm, I'm not even answering that. I'm not engaging that right now. <laughs> So, phrasing. So, <laughs> phrasing, you're doing it right. Mm. So, <laughs> they, they announced a joint development of QLC, quad level cell NAND, which means uh, basically it's 33% capacity boost compared to TLC NAND. Uh, this means four bits per cell versus three bits, which unfortunately looks like it might lead into uh, endurance reduction. I'll be interested to see uh, how it actually works out versus being on paper, since these are only enterprise drive right now. I believe uh, 
I believe it was Micron 2100s. Uh, I'm sure someone will correct me on that, and John Coulter will rip me apart for my lack of details. It's okay. I'm just happy that there's more enterprise SSD solutions coming out because there was not much back well, in the day. Well, the best part about the, Q, uh, the QLC means... Uh, means that we'll be able to have much higher density drives. And I think right. as they improve the technology, hopefully the endurance will go up. However, there is only so much you can do with what you have. That's why I really like the Optane technology is the fact, and I hate to keep banging on that because someone's going to swear like, <laughs> Jesus, Jeff. Branding. Um, Available online. Are, do we actually sell those? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't feel as special anymore knowing that I have an AVA direct cup. You like shouldn't. That. You shouldn't. You're just a cog in a wheel. You hear that, Alex? I'm just a cog in a wheel. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Alex is just like, leave me off camera. And we're like, hey, Alex. Just all the dust time. in the wind. You want, would you like to make another song? Uh, <laughs> no, not at this moment. I, I am not a circus monkey. You can't just play your little instrument and I'll dance to it. Yeah, I know, John. Actually, that's something I was actually about to bring up was the 1K PE. So basically, figure your, uh, basically, it's 1K, 1K PE, which means uh, how many times you can write, to the write, the full, uh, write the full cell before basically... I don't want to say it dies, but it wears to a point where it's likely going to not be usable and the controller will actually stop from using it. Right. So figure it's going to, you're going to, if you're writing that much, like what some enterprise applications do, like database, things like that, where potentially you're swapping data very consistently, it will pretty much, uh, you can nuke that drive rather quickly, especially not even enterprise, but like the professional applications. Like when we build workstations, one of the things we have to consider is if you're doing digital workstations or graphic workstations, you may be working on 4K, 8K video files that can write and rewrite and basically go over itself multiple times. That's where the controller really is important to make sure it addresses the NAND properly. Now that's true. And not to mention if the endurance is going to improve as a result of that, we may actually see a day time when scratch drives just aren't needed because it can handle that, that level of read and write. So that's what I want to see come to practice. Well, that's where I really like, once once again, I was before I went off on my tangent about us being like almost like an Optane-sponsored thing, but it, it's just something I'm really excited about because of... <laughs> wait, we have no the, logo. The logo's, no! Coming. the logo's coming any moment. I'll sponsor my Optane. <laughs> no, honestly, the thing I like about Optane, and one of the things I even mentioned in our video, if you haven't seen it on YouTube, please go join us, subscribe, like it, all that good stuff, and tell us cool videos you'd like to see. Um, but I talked about Optane and the fact that it is so much higher endurance. Like, for instance, if you one of the things I mentioned was... If you build a graphical workstation, you're doing like a huge render and you're constantly writing that data, like, uh, you know, when you're talking like terabytes of data possibly being written, um, you could knock us, and I actually did the, I actually did like a comparison of a Samsung, let's say 960 Pro, which actually has better endurance than 960 Evo. Yeah. You take that, and if you're writing it at such a heavy read-write, basically you can wipe it out to where the drive will theoretically be dead within three months. Whereas at that same that's good same well that same amount of data usage an Optane drive would be five years, I believe it. So that's that's a long based time. on the specs I've seen I believe it and that's good. And did you know I, I actually just found this out recently. There are some manufacturers out there. There are some system builders out there that will put in their warranty clause that if you exceed the average recommended read and writes per day by the SSD manufacturer, your warranty is void. We do not do that. Just put yeah. it out there. Well, we do put ourselves in that position, but that's because we really give a crap about our customers, too. It's so. not just that. We just we treat our partners well, and they treat us well. It's as simple as that. You that's know, true. Scratch your back, and you can scratch mine in return. Marvin the Martian. Oh, that makes me so angry. I have a motherboard in front of me. Don't make me spit water, please. Alex already asked me. He's like, do you want to get Steam for that? I'm like, no, it'll be fine. Then I'm going to spit water on it and be like, whoops. I mean, you could just be like, this is a great board. Fantastic. And you're like, well, it was. Wow, Kevin's really Giveaway cool. coming soon. Kevin's really, he's like, he's like, right, he's a lab monkey, right? And then he's all monkeys flame, flame crap, right, Shannon? What did oh. I ever do to you, Kevin? Honestly. You've I'll maybe, watch Airplane, okay? Maybe, maybe because you've never done something. Ouch. Wow, right maybe, in the feels, dude. Maybe because, maybe because Kevin's expected some attention and you've never given it to him. Hi, Kevin. Do you want to cuddle? We can cuddle if you want. I'm not past it. John, John says, uh, Optane rules because performance doesn't drop when running sustained workloads. Yeah, steady state performance. That's true, yeah. Consistent performance. That's a big one, and I think that's where, you know, not just consumer-based, but professional usage, Optane is a plus. I'm sitting here like this, Joe. I'm just like, wee. I don't know why. Why? When don't, don't tweak the knobs. Leave the knobs alone. Respect the knobs. I, uh, you know what? We're just going to talk about GPP because why not? And, you know, let's piss some people off. So. GPP! More remnants. Uh, this is all speculation, by the way. Just saying. The GPP stuff, obviously, is supposedly dead. Um, but um, went on the MSI website, kind of funny enough, and uh, choosing graphics section, selected AMG GPU to see what would happen. Mm. And it was all NVIDIA cards. 
So Did you talk to MSI about this? No, because I was like, I don't know why this is happening. And I basically was like, oh, I wonder if this is, you know, all being reverted now. So I went and clicked it, and it's like, oh, cool, NVIDIA cards. Then you got to go through another sub menu, and you got to dig through the uh, pits of hell, aka uh, uh, the wonderful filter section, to get yourself to AMD cards, but you do find them. Do you feel that maybe that could have been a possible stipulation of the great GPP? I feel like that could have been, you know, where they basically were trying to deactivate while they were working on the next topic, which is uh, the next part of this, I should say, which is MSI Mech Series AMD cards. All of a sudden, MSI, kind of like Asus with the Ares series, uh, they now have a Mech 2 series. Uh, Mac, which Mac are, what? Which are all Mac, AMD. Mac what? And that doesn't say the word gaming. Mac, Mac Warrior? It kinda, Mac, Mac actually, card? when you look at the front of the Mechanical? box. Mechanical? What are we mecking? Did you say mecking or mecking? Mecking. Oh, okay, mecking. Uh, it says it's mech 2, and it's they look mech kind two. of, if you remember the old like uh, Ghost Bear Legacy, like uh, Mech Warrior, it kind of looks like one of the mechs from that, so. Well, then that's kind of cool, especially if the air shroud looks like that, like I'm down. No, 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 the front of the box. I'm pretty sure the air shrouds look similar to the other cards. They just, they don't care. They're like, we got to put a different brand on this, and they did it. Well, but there's no GPP. I mean, there's no GPP that would have been. That's not part of the GPP, I'm sure. Uh, no. well, 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 it, it's not, but it may be. It could GPP. No. Should, it, it needs to just die. Just just die, GPP. Go away. More knob action. Hey, Kim. Um, more knob action. Is that Alex? No, this is a motherboard. Wait, is what Alex? <laughs> is, what? Hey, look, this is our CEO. So Isn't he pretty? So now we need to edit this Someone video. Someone asked, is this Alex? So now we need to edit the video and we need to put googly eyes and like the little wavy arms that people do to make Alex, objects. Alex, we're bringing you on camera next week and you're going to wear a picture of this motherboard over your face. We're, we're just going to record Alex saying a few comments and we're going to move the board and motion capture it. And that, can can we just take it. the CPU and split it so it's like, it's like, it's like. I mean, we could, kind of like the Canadian animation for South Park. Like, hey, yes. guy, hey, guy, hey, what are you doing here? I'm not your buddy, pal. I'm not your pal, guy. I'm not your guy, friend. No, oh, jeez. <laughs> Why is this happening? Good things. Oh. Good things. And then, <laughs> so we know we know that uh, some of the effects are possibly some of the ripples, so to speak, when it when a uh, GPP at the pond is possibly still happening, or it just happened to be so coincidental that. Asus decided to pull all cards out of the ROG line and drop them into Ares because reasons, and MSI decided to release Mech Series at the same time because, you know what, I'm pretty sure AMD didn't request that, but who knows. I, I, you know what, it's all speculation. I'm just going to say, uh, just wow. All I'm, all I'm going to bring up, touching on that subject, was the time when a video game was released with NVIDIA Hairworks, and it just absolutely tanked AMD performance. Yeah. I, I could see that just like if you remember. But then again, that goes both ways. Do you remember Tress Effects on uh, Tomb Raider? Yeah. Do you remember that on NVIDIA card? The hair's all. <laughs> remember well, that? I, but here's the thing, though. The game in which I was referencing was Witcher 3. And Witcher 3, I'm pretty sure, came out before Tomb Raider did, didn't it? Uh, no. no. No, Tomb Raider no. came out first. No, Tomb Raider so, definitely came so out first. So maybe I have this backwards. Maybe that was NVIDIA's response. Like, ho, ho, ho. Think of crafty. You know, let's just Im implement 55 times tessellation on anything that has hair. I feel like when you did that, you needed like a monocle. But yeah. Oh, ho, ho. do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Oh, geez. Everyone's, everyone's making fun of the, uh, everyone's making fun of the South Park reference now. Oh, God. Oh, uh, we started a, a South we've Park we've, trolling. We've done a thing. A trolling by South Park. I think uh, Sandy actually made a pretty pretty good point. He said, I think the way these GPU makers cave to anything NVIDIA wants is ridiculous. Spineless. You know... Um, what choice do you have, though? Like, when your Sandy, bread and butter is making a product that hinges on a company cooperating with you to make said product. Sandy, I gotta, I gotta be honest about this because I've worked on both sides of the fence here and being a partner. I mean, obviously... There is some intrinsic risk, and let's bring this up, but we're going to be honest with you guys. We're going we're gonna to play the game, and we're not going to pull any punches with this kind of stuff. And when it comes down to it, the way the partnership works between an AIB or add-in board partner or someone who makes the cards, they get the GPUs from, whether it's AMD or NVIDIA, the GPU, the chip itself, comes to them. Then they get whatever memory they certify for it, and they build the PCBs out. So let's say, hypothetically, you pissed off partner N or partner A, uh, that person could theoretically pull what's called allocation, which is all of your supply, 
and stop allowing you to make cards. Not that you couldn't make cards, but you're going to have a really tough time selling them if they don't have a GPU on them. Just saying. Yep. This is true. And that, that becomes one of those things where you, you got to look at it and, I mean, you know, your lifeblood of your business, if you're selling GPUs as your primary source, sometimes you got to just kind of look down and just go, okay, okay, daddy, whatever you want, I'll do it. Yeah, you just got to eat the crap, man, every now and then. That's, that's kind of part of life, isn't it? You just learn when to eat the crap and when not to, when it's appropriate. <laughs> and that's the situation, I, I'm going to be honest, if it were my business and it was like, hey, everything that hinges on your business being successful might go away in large quantities, what do you want me to do? And, and the thing is, yeah, not just that, but imagine, let's say that like that specific partner is over 70, 80% of what you're selling. Right. That could that could destroy your business. It so could, It could absolutely destroy as, your business. As much as you may look at it and say spineless, you gotta look at it from a business, stance, a business sense standpoint. I mean, unless you're planning to start making like chef's knives or something, I mean. You could. You could. It's a pretty badass chef knives, might I add. Well, I guess if you do the whole Japanese folding steel thing, maybe. I would want to learn to juggle them actually, not fold them. Because that takes a lot of skill. You fold the metal to make it stronger. No. No fold. I'm, I'm done with that. Talk. I'm done with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we did release a video recently on our uh, YouTube channel. So once again, like, subscribe, give us thumbs up because I'm doing those things. So. When did we release it? What day? Hey, Brooke. Brooke <laughs> you don't remember. Brooke, what day did we release the Gigabyte board? Wednesday. Wednesday. Thank you. See, I have resources. I know how to use them. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. She's on the ball. She had that like right away. Yep. Um, we launched a video on a YouTube channel showing this um, showing this board. Oh! Yeah. It's okay. No, no products were hurt when I just slid it across the table. I promise. Just trees. Oh well, whatever. That that's not trees. That's like plastic. I'm, I'm pretty sure the surface of this thing is not wood. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> you're a child. <laughs> you're I a didn't child. say anything. I left that up for complete interpretation, sir. How did you guys interpret that snicker? Please, don't it, don't please answer it. Reply. I'm waiting. No. Let's see. <laughs> oh boy, it reminds me of working at Vega. Oh no. Let's see. Uh, a company alone would get crushed if they all stand together. Uh, Nvidia can sell cards directly. They're already doing it. Yeah, they'd so. be like, hey, we're going to sell cards directly and at $200 below ad and, board, ad and board partner price. And I feel like Nvidia would be a company that would take the massive loss of profits just to prove a point. And the thing is, people are going to go buy the cards they want. And right now, they want NVIDIA until they get a serious competitor that's going to push them another direction. Um, or pissed off partner A. In that case, you're making filthy intern videos. Wow. Um, I, <laughs> thanks, Kev. <laughs> Sandy, I understand that, and it sucks for the end user. Yeah, it does, but let's hope we get some competition soon so that we can actually have both sides of the fence fighting, and it forces some innovation, kind of like we saw on the CPU side. That's what I'm looking forward to. Um, Ernie put, oh boy, reminds me of working at Vega. I have, n oh wait, oh goodness, I know what he's saying and this makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Why do you think I saying. said that like two uh, minutes ago? You didn't catch uh, it? I didn't catch it, but God, he's so right. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Nvidia is a software company, not a hardware company. Well, that, Chad, I, 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 uh, I digress. This is something that uh, we could go on about. There is a lot of things. They uh, also make car computers and I'm pretty sure next thing you know, it'll be a mixer. Who knows? They can make all kinds of things. Um, Whee! Back to this awesome board. We, uh, did, we did do some coverage on this. The reason I'm actually bringing it up on the live stream is there was some really cool stuff I liked about this board that they did really well. One of them being... Do those standoffs come with the board? No, those are actually... By the way... <laughs> I swear, the ke Kevin asking me to smack you is getting more and closer and closer every oh, moment. Oh, I'm just testing you more and more waiting until it happens. Yeah, I'm, I swear. Remember knives, guys? Next week might involve knives. It <laughs> might involve one host going forward. Remember knives? Remember forks? Forks to the eyes. <laughs> Maybe uh, later we can play fork knife. There's other games planned this weekend. <laughs> Many of them. We can talk about that later. Anyways, please <laughs> continue. Uh, is the heat, <laughs> the heat sink design they did on this is actually a fin array versus the standard chunk of aluminum that you normally get on most boards. So this actually allows a much higher surface area to dissipate off of the VRM, which is ridiculously overbuilt since you don't technically need a VRM cooler since I started this board and ran it overclocked without a cooler <laughs> and it was okay. <laughs> and it didn't blow up. I can't say the same for other boards I've done that to, but this board and the uh, Crosshair, uh, the Crosshair VII, because I really suck at uh, seven, Crosshair seven. Someone help. Any of you, drive down here, take him away. 
Take I, him, I give just, him, get him an ice cream from McDonald's. I don't care. Do something. Ice cream. Ice cream. No, I just, I, I just wanted to see the durability of the heat sinks, man. They look, they they're, look nice. They're maybe a little unnecessary. They're <laughs> so. You can run these boards technically without heat sinks, and this tells me that because yeah. I've dealt with board design before, I can tell you that if you build a VRM so robust that you can run the top end chip like a 2700, uh, 2700X, I almost said 2700K, that would be like years please, and years ago. Please go ahead, feel free. 2700X, uh, Ryzen 7, the newest one released, second gen. Um, this thing can run without, full, fully overclocked by the way, like 4.1, 4.2 gigahertz, without a problem. Obviously the VRM will get warm, it'll get like 80s. It gets around 70, 80ish. So you're saying they could overclock this thing even without the VRMs? Yeah, fully overclocked, run it full burn-in test without a problem. Now we're going to get a bunch of people that are going to try this weekend and then blame you for their boards dying. Um, disclaimer, um, if, you, <laughs> if you blow up your board, I don't care. That's your fault. Yeah, you don't. Do, anything I tell you is my own testing, and I don't mind breaking a piece of hardware because that's what I do in R&D is break stuff. Um, I shouldn't have said that in front of Alex. Try um, this, try, so in other words, try this at home, not his problem. Yeah, try it at home. It's not on us. Just saying, this thing is so massively overbuilt that it gives me a hint that they're potentially, and I don't have any information to back this up because I would not speak about it if I did, that potentially down the road, we could see, once again, higher core count chips coming. Or That'd be sweet. Like, you know, something that will be cause it to dramatically pull more power. Because I'm not gonna say it's iGPU like with the Vega ones because it actually has a two-phase feeding that or feeding the uh, SOC. So with that being said, the 10-phase that's on here is so ridiculously overbuilt that it's actually in an optimal frequent, it's actually in an optimal efficiency range, fully loaded and overclocked. So that means it's got so much more headroom. If you really wanted to push a limited VRM, you would have to push a much, a much higher core count or a much higher, I don't even think higher frequency CPU would really push it that hard. No, I think it would not. take, I think it would take probably a 10, 12 core CPU to really start to see you heat up these VRMs to a point where it would need a cooler. Sure. And this thing's ridiculous with the uh, fin array along with a direct touch heat pipe. So that kind of technology, they stopped doing a long time ago. Last time I saw a, a fin array like this on a board, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but I'm pretty sure I saw that on a uh, DFI, like a DFI X58. They had one on their first, they were the first one with the digital VRM as well. I thought EVGA had one too. Yeah, you know what, actually it did, because I was there it was just that. It was just shaped really weird. It was like this weird dome shape. It was a classified P55 or P68 or Z68 or something, I can't remember. So I just want to state, Mutation666 on YouTube said that NVMe heatsinks are really pointless due to the fact that they don't really get that hot and don't need to be cooled, but memory lasts longer when it's warmer. And I mean, you're not wrong in, in the technical sense of things, but do remember that Samsung 960 drives had a big problem with heat back in the day, and that was kind of the response board manufacturer's response to it, and then Intel had an SSD that started to get kind of hot too. So, I mean, there's a few select models that ran hot, but otherwise I do agree with you. Most NVMe drives don't really get that hot. This is hilarious. Uh, Mutation666 on YouTube asks, where's that soul fallen guy? So, Zach is uh, not here today. He decided to take a vacation day and go off on a road trip. So hopefully he's, uh, he's probably driving safely across the wherever he's going in the country right now. He's going to Michigan where the roads are just absolutely gorgeous. Where they're, oh, just as gorgeous as, uh, like, Akron? Yes. <laughs> Let's not get into the pothole discussion again. There are no potholes. <laughs> There's only just gigantic <laughs> holes is what you're saying. There is no potholes, only Zool. <laughs> Let's see. Two Fuchs is on two with no thermal. Uh, actually, I think uh, I think if you were pushing this on LN2, the, the, uh, the subliminal cooling would be enough. It would probably still passively cool it well enough that it, because it would... Because the PCB is metal, it has multiple layers of copper. So technically, I mean, when I've cooled CPUs on LN2, I've had memory, even the back I/O freeze. So I would say you probably wow. have enough passive cooling; it wouldn't, it still wouldn't be an issue. I think it would be okay. I mean, unless you really got a higher core count CPU that would cause that. Um, other than that, some of the other cool things was like the. Uh, I'm supposed to be replaced by a tank of LN2. That works. I don't know. Can a tank of LN2 move like this? If I put a couple hoses off of it, I could turn it on and be blah, 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 blah. Oh, and then I'm just like wacky wavy on a inflatable tube man. Inflatable tube man? See, I want that one, the one with the arrow that says funeral. It's like, ah. That's awful. That's great. That's just awful. We're just saying that because <laughs> we're on camera. We're just saying that we're on camera. You're trying to make me seem like a bad person. I mean, you're not though. Uh, John put, uh, I bet next week will involve sh uh, shopping, right, Shannon? Or uh, Shannon? Uh, yeah, great. That's uh, a live stream all on its own. No, that's a that's a live stream I will not do because I enjoy shopping so much I have to pay full attention to it. Let's just leave it at that. Um, 
The one other thing I would say, and this is for the RGB <laughs> enthusiasts, the people that love uh, big flashy, crazy setups. Uh, this board supports not just your 50-50 or, or the RGBW strips. It also supports full digital uh, addressable strips. So you have some options there, along with a uh, along with a strip connection for specifically for CPU coolers. Since AMD came up on their second gen with that RGB cooler, it came with. It actually has a direct connector right next to the CPU socket to hook up to that. That's pretty sweet. So that was pretty. That was pretty sick. I'm glad that I'm glad they're embracing that for people that really care about RGB. Gigabyte stepped up in a big way. I do have to say that. I, I do Huge. have to agree. I know we're. I know, I know I'm a big fan of ASUS for a long time, but I feel like Gigabyte really stepped up in a major way on the recent chipsets between Z390 or Z370, um, Z370, X299. I mean, across the board in the. Uh, X470 and even X370, they've done a solid job with. I mean, all these current chipsets have been really good. Yeah, I feel like X79 was like the last set of boards that they kind of, it feels like they rushed it out and did it out of obligation. I, I don't disagree because X58, I mean, X58 was rough. Uh, before that, like I had really good luck with their 775 boards. And once we got into the newer chipsets where they started to do the Core i series, I feel like Gigabyte struggled for a while, but I feel like they made a really solid board across these new chipsets. and. I'm excited to see what they do as more chipsets are going to be coming. We, we all know every, everything's always improving. Everything's always changing. So. Right. Replace Joe with a tank of LN2. He, he, put, he put, holy crap, I didn't expect that as a response. Well. I mean, if you want to replace me with a tank of LN2, feel free. I'm just saying. It's going to be kind of boring. But my question is, are you as cold as a tank of LN2? I mean, I can be. Well, I have seen it. He can so we're going to get rid of Mr. Gigabyte board because I'm worried I'm going to break it now because well, Alex Gigabyte. made me nervous about it. Um, next, uh, we're past all the hardware news, unless you guys have anything else you feel. Yeah, P55 were okay, Chad. I feel like P55 was when they started to wane a little bit. We have um, a P55 in the, in the sports department right now, and it's a nice little board. And even Sports Raid. Sports Raid. Sports Yay. Raid. I feel, like, uh, I feel like the P55, it kind of waned a little bit. I feel like this is something where we started to see the turn as far as, you know, the first. Whoa, that's blinking green. It means go. Go. Get go, up and go, go. go. Get up and go. So now we're going to move to some gaming stuff. Uh, days gone. This was uh, thanks to John Stewart from last week. Uh, he had, he had thanks, John. He had the, and I don't think it's a John Stewart you're thinking. Just saying. No, not of The Daily Show. But I feel like... Uh, I feel like that is an interesting one, and Joe, Joe, you seemed really interested in this one. Yeah, because, I mean, even though it's yay, zombies, it kind of feels like it's... It's basically an open an open world of uh, The Last of Us is what it seems like to me when I read into it. Like they put a lot of focus into the combat. I uh, don't know a whole lot about the narrative because I really only looked into this game to be honest because John recommended it. Otherwise, I would have just looked into the synopsis. That would have been it. And then I never would have looked at it again because I like the element of surprise and I don't like the media ruining A, an experience for me and B, shoving an opinion down my throat. Yeah, that's the thing. If I read, I've got to like look at games as the game, if I look at it as previews and sneak peeks, and even even the Battle Five, Battlefield Five, I struggled with watching the trailer because what happens is I'll start to form an opinion before playing a game, and well, we've all seen where sometimes people make an opinion about a game and they're like, "This is horrible." Then you play it and you're like, "I actually like this," and it's like, "Wow, right? I wish I didn't listen to people." Right. That's what I think has spawned my whole thought process of if someone tells me like a movie's horrible, I have to watch it, and a lot of times they're right, occasionally they're wrong. Because even if it's bad, you want you want to see how bad it is, you know? I mean, I watched The Room back in the day because I played the mini game on Newgrounds. No idea what The Room was. You're I'm, shedding on the paper, just saying. I mean, I'm okay. I'm going to shed, dude. I'm a man beast. What do you want from me? I'm not an LN2 tank. Yeah, I will. And it's funny because uh, Kevin actually said, he's all, well, he sure can move like a tank of LN2, so. Tell, show me a tank of LN2 that moves the way I do. And Kevin did ask you a very important question. I feel like this needs to be answered. He said, what do you like shoved down your throat? Pizza. That works. Air. That's safe. Water. I have a feeling, funny feeling if you uh, shoved air down your throat, eventually you would suffocate. Because you have to exhale. I mean, I never said that I liked having air shoved down my throat without the ability to exhale. That's like, guess, saying, that's like saying I'm going to eat pizza and not digest it. So I guess it comes down to duration of air being shoved down your throat. That's an entirely separate topic for another time. If you want, we can have a live stream just on what will Joe shove down his throat this week. <laughs> if get it a, really interests you. Oh, next show. Get a pizza, Shannon. Because you said you love having pizza shoved down your throat. I mean, let's do it. As long as it's not piping hot. But, I mean, if it's piping hot, I mean, that's going to be a workman's comp case. Alex is not even looking at you. Alex is like, nope. 
Shana wants to shove pizza down my throat, so I figure if it's piping hot, they're if I asking hurt. me to. It's it's a it's a it's a, it's a community request, Alex. <laughs> They're requesting I shove a pizza down, <laughs> down, not Alex's throat, Joe's throat. I mean, we could do both if he's game. I mean, the more the better, right? <laughs> Alex is, Alex is <laughs> there. I, I, could re, I, I could reenact what Alex just did. He went. Can we do that? Can we just have like a third person that just kind of stands behind us and just reenacts it all? No, because he'd probably walk off after like two minutes. He'd be like, nope, I'm not part of this. At some point, we just keep rambling on about things and then pink slips start, pink slips start being written out and we're just like. I'm just going to get an email. That was fun while it lasted, guys. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just I'm, all of a sudden my access to Facebook's just gonna be gone. I'll be like, well, that worked. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's at least finish the live stream. Let's see. Uh, Fair enough. I'm getting hungry with all this pizza talk. Yeah, yeah. I am too. All I had today was a chewy bar. I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich because reasons. And a bunch of Lifesaver gummies, which look delicious, by the way. I left them on my desk. I should have brought them in here, actually. Probably should have. Oh, I'm I selfish. Think so. I'm selfish. It's okay. You're fine. Okay, so day's gone. Seems interesting. I actually saw this game at uh, PAX, uh, Detroit Become Human, because we want to talk about console games, because we support all gaming. Super excited about this game, by the way. I remember watching this video when it first came out, and what I love about uh, the VP of Quantic Dream, because that's the guy that does like all of like the directing for it and everything, I love what he can do to put emotion into a game, because I'm pretty receptive to that stuff when it comes to movies and games and music. So... I was hoping they were going to come out with a game based on that short, and then it didn't, and then people practically demanded it, and then he was like, all right, fine. I'll make a game out of it. So I haven't, again, have not read anything about it. I know nothing about the storyline. I'm going to keep it that way. I'm going to let it surprise me. I don't either cry myself to sleep out of sadness or cry myself to sleep out of the fact that it was an amazing game. So either way, I'm crying myself to sleep. Well, there you go. Now the question is, well, one, of the, one of the points that were brought up is, do PS4 graphics do it justice? No. Nope. It's a Jaguar CPU with like. No. I think it's like, it's not even RX series. It's like, eight thousand series graphics. I think. If you would have asked me this, three years ago, three or four years ago, right when PS4 and the Xbox One came out, I'd probably say yeah, it's not bad because, uh, PC gaming capabilities as far as the way the graphics were able to render were, were kind of close. Yeah. The performance wasn't there, but it was it was okay. It was close. Anti-aliasing wasn't. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of great tessellation, but. I would say yes. Now, absolutely not. I, I honestly, I think the experience with the PS4's price point or the PS3's price point when it first came out scared a lot of console makers into thinking that they could get away with a price point like that yeah. on a console. The reason why Sony couldn't get away with that price point back in the day is because it just simply didn't make sense for what you were getting. If you compared an $800 PS3 next to an $800 PC, a PC would probably actually come out ahead most of the time based on what that day's standards were. Now... I think people would even maybe even be willing to spend a thousand dollars on a console if it ran better than a, a a PC, or at least equivalent to. Sure. And you know what? If they made, I think if they made consoles modular, so you could literally it would become a PC at that point. But imagine if you had like a graphics module, so it wasn't hard like what we have to deal with now. Right. You just literally beep beep. Well, plug a part in. If you remember. Uh, beep beep. How come I feel like old switchboard operator now? It's like, beep, boop, boop, let me connect you. Party line. Beep, 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 beep. Or Tron, like when he falls into like the cavity. Original, beep, original Tron. Beep, beep, beep. Original Tron. Yes, good. original. Thank right. You. Yeah. Um, there is there is that rumor that surfaced like a couple of months after the Switch release. If you ever saw it on Reddit, that a couple of people caught a sneak peek about some sort of like additional dock accessory for the Switch, and there wasn't a whole lot released other than like. It was graphics card specifications is what they pulled out of it. So if that's any indication of what Nintendo is starting to do, I think they're onto something. And if it works, and if that's something they intend to do by giving people the option to upgrade their Switch capabilities, I think console manufacturers are going to follow suit easily. So now that brings up a very good question of why not include a Thunderbolt port on the next gen console so that you can plug in an external GPU box and you could upgrade it very easily? Well, isn't doesn't the Switch have a USB 3.1? Uh, but it's not Thunderbolt, I don't think. It's, it's C. It's, it's USB 3.0 C, right? That's different. It's a different interface because it doesn't pass PCIe. I know, but it's still going to be good enough, I think. But you don't have the interconnect, so the graphics card can't actually be utilized. Oh, that's, that's not going to be utilized at all? You sure? No, you only have 10 gigabit lane. That's not even PCIe X1. But that's what it uses to communicate data for video output on the dock. Yeah, but that's just video output. You can pass video output through a 
uh, micro USB, if you remember, like on the older Android phones. The only thing I can think of that is that, that would make sense if they were going to have a, an additional dock then, because that dock would probably have a way to translate that into usable graphics. In maybe, maybe the maybe the Switch actually does support Thunderbolt, and no one knows it. Maybe it does. I mean, it feels like it, dude. The, the amperage rating on that on that port is a beast. You could throw three three amps at it, and it's like, thanks, and it charges. How was, and like, how was that again? That's that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kevin put, I love lamp. Um, R2D Shannon. Oh, God. Oh, goodness. R2D is... Shannon. Calm down, R2. Because I could sell you another console two years later. Ah, Marine. Chainsaws and pizza. Well, Joe, there's your, there's your call for next week. That, that's tomorrow. Sandy says, because they, can, because they can sell you another console two years later. That is only slightly better. You're not wrong. Yeah, but a lot of people are just getting frustrated with consoles and they're just looking to PC gaming. For example, my brother-in-law has an Xbox One. He's had it for a while. He played Call of Duty. And then he got PUBG when it came out because he actually watched some of the live streams you and I did yeah. back in the day. And he's like, this game looks awesome. And he watched it all the way up until the point where he got it himself. And because he just really, I don't want to say didn't know any better, he just didn't have an experience PC gaming, he was just kind of working with it. And... Uh, we built him a PC for his birthday, when, and you helped out with that as well. So thank you again. And I got to see him play it, and I was just baffled. Like, how could you, how could you deal with this? Like, you land on a map before anything spawns, and you're running out. Looks to be open field, but oh, there's a car. You can't run there anymore. Running in place because it's actually a building. And when you open up the PC, at first he's like, oh, you know, I'll get it set up some other time. We just hang out. I'm like, are you sure? And he's like, no, no, we're gonna set it up now. So I set it up for him real quick. And you couldn't believe, like, this is, like, what PCs could do. It's like, this is how it is? This, this is amazing. Like, so much so that it actually inspired him to, to stop using a controller and learn keyboard and mouse because he wanted, like, the full experience. And that's, in my opinion, that's Microsoft's screw-up, and that's Sony's screw-up for not pulling him in and, and not giving him a reason to go to a PC. Yeah. I, uh, I definitely agree. I feel like this is, I feel like that... Uh, console makers have uh, kind of rested on their laurels, but they also know there's limitations to the hardware because it's not upgradable at this time. Um, I feel like, uh, I feel like, I mean, we are coming up on our time, guys. Do you, um, if you guys are interested, we can keep going with a little bit of this, keep talking and uh, talk to you guys. As long as you guys have some good questions, we're more than willing to roll with this a bit longer. And I gotta say, I, I like you, Sandy, because you only use your Xbox as a media center and a PC is what PC gaming is for, and that's absolutely true. Because I, my Xbox is gathering dust because all I do is I use it to, no pun intended, boot up silicon dust and watch cable. My Xbox One is a $500 cable box that doesn't even <laughs> hold any storage. Uh, see, I, I, I use mine for exclusive stuff, ones you can't get on PC, which is very rare. Like what? Uh, God of War. God of War's on the Xbox? No, on PS4. I was talking about Xbox. Well, I'm saying I use my, I use my consoles <laughs> for, I use my consoles for things that Fair I mean, enough. Broad I, statement, and I missed I also it. use that as a decoration to be like, ooh, I got this thing. It's also apparently a way to teach my daughter how to touch things that don't belong to her and get responses out of it. So. I have a Wii. Because I'm a grandma. Because, you know, a Wii is you basically, remember, Wii Bowling? You used to enjoy it for like one day, and then you stopped playing it forever? I did that. No, actually, it, that was the cheapest console back in the day when I used to work at Hollywood Video, and... So that's why I got it, because it was just cheap, and I wanted a new console, because uh, it was red. The Wii, PS3, and the Xbox 360 were all coming out, right? Like, right around the same point in time. Or the Xbox 360 had some sort of, like, definitive bundle that was trying to, to compete with it. And I, I got used to it. I thought it was pretty cool. But as soon as it wasn't the only console I had, I stopped playing it. Well, I have a Wii. I can't even find the motion thing anymore since I moved two years ago to Ohio. Almost two years ago now to Ohio. I have spares. Do you want one? I don't even know if I remember the login for the Wii anymore. I'm, I'm pretty oh, sure. For your account? Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty I could, sure. couldn't figure out mine either. Um, it's funny. I, we asked if they want us to go any longer, and uh, Kevin replied, yes, more time with you, trained monkey tank of LN2. Monkey slash tank of LN2. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, like, I need a little finger you symbols. Do, you, do, you do vape. Bing. that Pretend. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> once again, once again, just to reiterate, since you guys can't see off screen, I got Alex looking over going. I mean, unless like the views like tripled, then he would just go from. Just keep doing it. I don't care. Yeah. Metrics are great. Blow smoke at the ceiling. 
<laughs> Welcome to my stage, Shannon. Drunk okay. Mario Kart, dude. Yes. Yes, unless you get so drunk that you close your eyes and rub them for a second. When you open them, you have eight Mario Karts on the screen and you should probably stop moving. Oh, drunk Mario Kart. Not oh. speaking from past experience at all. Not at all. Welcome to my state. I've just heard. Your state. I'm pretty sure other people live here too, Sandy. Welcome, Travis. How you doing today? Oh, hey. How's it going, buddy? Feeling better? Having fun? <laughs> just saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this all forked off of Detroit Become Human. So, are these kind of games getting old? Um, I mean, see, yes and no. As long as there's a market for them, I feel like as long as people play them, that's that's gonna have. Go ahead. I mean, you're not wrong. As long as there's a market for them, they're probably gonna have these games released on, on a semi-considerable basis. But seg segueing into the next point. Oh boy, this one? Fortnite, Any? Play School PUBG? No, see now you need glasses because I'm talking oh, about this whether one. the VR experience Well you pointed it. to the left. Uh huh, there's just fast finger every time. See what happens, Joe has glasses so it like refracts, so he's like, hey, over here! And I'm like, yeah, the paper's the, over here, Joe. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, just, you know, flamethrower. Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> Your fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to be active, forget you, watch. No, stand up stretch, man, you gotta be active. Ow, that was my back. <laughs> uh, I'm not your, being, bo your body just punished you for doing the right thing. <laughs> I'm not being active anymore. Forget it. I'm just gonna I'm gonna be like Wally. I'm just gonna sit in a chair and float around. <laughs> Red or blue? Oh god. Nope. Red or blue, Shannon. Yellow. So yeah, I think it'd be cool to have those those kinds of games like Heavy Rain and, and Detroit Become Human in VR. I've got a question. Yeah, any room for VR experiences. I feel like with PSVR, it actually could be a thing. You could, but except you wouldn't be You're VR. You're shedding again. There's more Joe. Okay, well, there's, Stop there's rushing Joe at there's me. There's plenty of me to go around. I feel like, though, that in VR for games like that, you wouldn't be, like, the main character. You'd still have to see things in third person, so you'd be, like, a lamp. Rob is old now. My name's Shannon, Sandy. And wow. I'm not old. I'm I mean... 35. He's, just, he's, the only, he's only a little salt and pepper. That, that just means he's distinguished. This has names. It's all Ashley and some Joe. Wait, I mean all Joe. Sorry. You had gray. Ashley's probably watching. I shouldn't. You say had that. gray hair when I met you. It's because my gr it grew out <laughs> and it grew out because it knew the future. It knew oh, I was going to meet you. Right. Okay. Um. So, Fortnite, Play School, PUBG. Fork uh, knife. Fork knife. Uh, it is the biggest game that exists at this time, beating out uh, the Salt Mine, aka uh, League of Legends. Uh, so much so that Epic has decided to dump millions into making sure that it's eSports ready. Versus PUBG, where eSports ready equals your car takes off like a spaceship. And even after knowing this information, I would still rather eat glass than play Fortnite. Yeah, because Fortnite means you have to build and shoot, and my brain doesn't work that way. And I don't think Joe's does either, because we run around to shoot things, and you go to build a building, someone kills you and takes your building. So. Build a building. So I Sorry. feel like that's kind of pointless. <laughs> um, somebody actually put it in a very good way yesterday to me, and that's f PUBG requires skill, and it requires tactic. You know, it, it actually takes you to have some sort of tactic to, to survive in that game whatsoever, whether it's I'm going to hide until somebody comes up to me and shoots me in the face or attempts to, or I'm going to shoot in anything that moves. I could not find answer your question. I didn't ask a question. Um, apparently, it's always listening, Shannon. Oh, that's good. Big brother hi, is watching Hi, you. CIA. How are you doing? Can you bring us a pizza? I need to shove it down Joe's... Oh, God. It's it's talking. <laughs> oh, God. So... Okay. Bye, watch. You're long, gone. Long story short, PUBG requires tactic and skill, and there's no skill in having somebody get shooting or finding somebody across the field shooting at him, and then they just randomly start putting up walls. But... But millions, like, could of, you do that millions real, of people are playing. Here's the question. In real life, could you do that? Because if, there, if I had the opportunity to just randomly put up on the wall, put up a wall in front of me and Shannon when he was babbling at me about things, I'd do it all the time. We, we're in Ohio. I, I feel like we could pull a ball of Amish people, man. They stand up things like that. You could have an Amish dude just boom, wall. Right Not one dude, probably like five people would take, dude. You ever seen like the Amish people work? Like they're, they're no joke, but it's they're not like, like and they pull a wall up. It's because they have tactic. They know all of the weak and strong points of a structure and where to pull it and where to push it. Ah, push it. Push it. Ah, push it. <laughs> Why is this happening? <laughs> I don't know. Why not? Okay. So, 
Basically, will they change gameplay to make spectating more entertaining? No, it's I don't find the game entertaining. I'm um, sure some I, of you do. That's great. No, but. I can see. I think what they're going to do for esports is I think they're going to dial down the hundred person matches and they're going to offer like twenty, like twenty person matches because they're going to. It's going to be smaller maps. And I think that's what PUBG is already starting to do with their new map. They have the much smaller map that they've been working on with a hundred people. I think that's what they're working toward. I think PUBG is going to was trying to beat Epic at the mark. And I feel like Epic caught wind of this in some way, shape, or form, and they just threw millions at it to, to beat him to the finish line. That's yeah. that's my hypothesis. I mean, Epic has Epic has a pretty amazing team when you think about what PUBG's done with the small team it started with, a relatively small. And you when mean Blue, Blue Hole? Blue Hole, yeah. <laughs> I feel unco- I still feel uncomfortable just, saying that now. Now you're just talking out of your brown hole. Oh, oh, Korean developer. I'm just gonna keep. I'm just gonna. I'm just driving this train right on the tracks. I'm not. Dri- I'm not letting this one derail. Yeah. Not again. Nope. Oh God. Uh, Travis. At this point, league is old. Most people move on because bigger and more interesting things. Not me. I'm stupid. You said it, Travis. Just saying. I mean, I feel like. Uh, I feel like when it comes down to it. Uh, if you have a solid game, people will continue to play it. WoW is a perfect example of that. World of Warcraft, people play that day in, day out, forever. And speaking of Fortnite and uh, you know all these uh, Battle Royale games, we got to look at one of the first ones. Obviously, after DayZ's mod, H1Z1. Yes, it still does exist. Uh, the only news with that recently, however, <laughs> is it finally came out for it finally came out for PS4, which uh, really begs the question: Why now? Because the games existed for like over three years. So why would you? I mean, I feel like they're trying to push for relevancy at this point That's because they've been, oh, they've been overthrown by PUBG first of all, and now Fortnite. And because of the person that invented PUBG or developed PUBG, because didn't Player Unknown work with H one Z one to create their battle royale portion of the game? And I know, then... I know, it was at least, it was uh, he he was the originator for the DayZ mod, which is what created like some of the battle royale, so to speak, the arena style like you know, deathmatch combat. Right. And not even arena style. That's the wrong word. But either way, he started that. And then I'm pretty sure H1Z1 pulled from that. I'm not sure if he's directly involved. I honestly I, don't know. I, I remember like watching a video on YouTube because I was interested because I never heard of this guy in my ignorance. And uh, the developers who worked on H1Z1 brought in player unknown because of like his unique skill set and thought process. And he helped them develop the fundamentals that H1Z1 used for their battle royale. But it's not all of his ideas. And that's kind of where this started. Like first it was Daisy from Arma, right? And then uh, H1, or H1Z1, right? And then uh, it, it just, somebody ended up reaching out to him, whether it was somebody from Blue Hole or somebody associated. And that's where player unknowns Battlegrounds came to be because they literally just gave him the floor. Like your original vision for all the projects you've worked on, do that. And he and took it, and he made an amazing game. That's I mean, what it's, PUBG a, is. it's horribly unoptimized still, but it, it's an amazing game. You know we, what? We still play it all the time. The loss of optimization, and I've learned to respect the slow mechanics of it because it requires you to have, I think, a little more skill involved. You know? I, I love how Brooke is commenting while sitting over there controlling the stream. Like she could literally shut us off at any moment, and she comments, she's like, "No PUBG on PS4." That. <laughs> Do you want your PS4 to catch fire? <laughs> No, no, I, I agree. I, actually, she made a very good point. Is That's why they brought H1Z1, because there is no PUBG on PS4, and the fact that I think Microsoft had exclusive. Yeah, see, she's shaking her head. Great. We're the host of this show, and we're being told the data for our show by the person operating the show. Round of, round of applause. Round of applause for Brooke, please, no, but, people. But, but I got to point out, too, Chad brought up something that was funny, because you were playing PUBG last night, and he had a ghillie suit, and he had a sniper, and I had level two armor and a sniper, and we watched the... Alex's favorite, by the way, sniper it, rifles. When it, he's got a scope, it is he, has, his, he can not be a favorite. happier man than when he gets a scope on a weapon. Shotguns and motorcycles, that's all I'm going to say. Oh, Anyways, Lord. so we were, we, Chad and I watched it go down from nine people alive down to four. So it was me and him and two other people. And we found like the perfect vantage point right on the edge of a map where you could dip down a little bit and people couldn't see you even if you were standing up. And here's Chad and I sticking to the right right side of the cliff. And I just see Chad's body start to slide further and further down until it just, the ocean just ate his body. He died immediately. So uh, Chad's post, or you could just go down, you have two teams left to fall down the cliff and PUBG, no skill required in that. <laughs> None at all. None at all. And by the way, Cameron, hey Cameron, he said, hey Shannon, how's it going? So what do you think of the new Battlefield 5 coming out? Have you seen the trailer? I actually mentioned that earlier, and yes, I have. And uh, Sandy says, thank you, Brooke. I'm sure you saw it, but... 
He said thank you for uh, educating us on edu educating us on uh, video games that we don't know about. We have our console education. <laughs> That's a good console education. Ba Battlefield Five, I feel like actually looks pretty legit. Looks really good. Um, I love the fact that Joe and I'm, I'm sure you've heard about this by now. No, nope. there is no premium, so everything's free. The maps, everything. There is no premium pack where you got to buy into all the DLC. It's really? Just, they're gonna. It's free DLC. And Battlefield Five. Yeah, their announced trailer, they said that, and I'm like, or their announce, announcement, and the trailer looks pretty damn awesome. It mm -hmm. looks really good. Do you think that has anything to do with what happened with um, with Star, the last Star Wars release? Oh, absolutely. I have no problem talking about it. I have friends that work there, and I don't care. They, oh. they completely screwed the pooch on that with, uh, with uh, wow, that sounds wrong, actually. With that uh, Star Wars, they, they're like, we're going to loot crate the hell out of everything. And it's like, why are you going to spend a ton of money just to... Just, just to get these cool little niche items. When you know what, you make the game fun to play, give people achievable goals, and they're gonna play your game. But longer. Shannon, it's Star Wars and it's Battlefront. So people pay anything. Thanks, Mickey Mouse. Wrong. And that's I honestly Mickey it. Mouse killed George Lucas's dream. Yes, he sure did. <laughs> and not to mention the fact that <laughs> EA people have had EA under scrutiny for years for the way that they've been handling microtransactions. And that's why you can find about every conceivable meme about EA hating single player games and not really creating any single player games because there's no money in it. No. You I, killed Maxis EA and I'll never forgive you. Yeah, that's true. Um, Battlefront 2, yada yada. Let's see. Um, are you a fan of Darksiders series and what do you plan on playing the third one whenever it's released? Yes. Absolutely. Love Darksiders series, man. Absolutely. Yeah, the first, the first one was actually a recommendation um, at, at the time was my fiance, now my wife. She felt that it was a game I thought I would enjoy, and I picked it up and played it from beginning to end. And then the second one, because of my interest in the first I played, and I have this weird thing about voice actors. I could pick people out, and I heard the guy, and I'm like, who is it? It's The voice actor was the same guy that played the, the, the villain, I guess, in the original Crow. The drug lord with long, dark yeah, hair. Yeah. That was the guy that did his voice. Didn't look into anything in the third one because, again, as I've mentioned multiple times, I don't like to look into the games that are coming out. And I cannot wait for the third one. I'm super stoked. That's awesome. Well, guys, I mean, if you're down with it, we're going to keep going a little bit, see if we can uh, cover more of this because our, next, top go. our next topic is kind of a funny one. It's uh, one, of the, one of the descriptions, which is, our CEO is better than yours. And he is. And there's, there's, Bring there's, it. there's a reason for this. If you can prove differently, we'd love to hear it. So, But uh, Alex is a pretty awesome dude. We've done some pretty cool stuff. And Joe, carry, carry it away, man. Oh, sorry. So like... basically, this all started one day when our commander-in-chief, Alex Sonis, approached me and said he wanted to bring his PC in because it was a, a little long in the tooth. Um, ran like And that's, that, is, that is an understatement of century because yeah. he, he got every bit of worth out of that. Thing. Right. And I remember this system because I built it for him back in the day. It was right when X79 came out and we gave him 64 gigs of memory because he was using it for video editing. Uh, we put uh, like a, a GTX... I want to say it was like a 670 in it at the time, or maybe it was a 650. 650. Because, it was a 650 because he didn't plan the game on it. He was like, just video editing, and that's that's all I needed. Um, and it was the A-Core processor, right? So An old A-Core processor. Old, old A-Core processor. Was that like X58 almost, I think? It was X. It was X79. Okay, that would have been 975, wouldn't it? 8-Core uh, would not. No, no, no. 9870. 4790X. Wow. 4970. I remember 4790X, 4970. It was a CPU. It, it was, was, yeah, it was it was a CPU with many cores and did yeah. many things. But So he brought it in, and we hooked him up with uh, an X299 ASUS board. He's got the 14-core processor, 32 gigs of RAM this time because he never even got close to touching 64, and uh, a GTX 1080. And the only reason why we gave him a GTX 1080, and I'll never forget this, he got kind of real close to me, and he whispers, um, can it play games? I said, yeah, Alex, you know, we, we make sure it plays games. Um, can it play PUBG? It's and like, that's because he yes. watched us play PUBG at one, yes, at one time. Yes, we can make or sure it can play PUBG. Okay, I got to do that. So, you know, we set him up with a Steam account, um, gave him a name, which it's ironic because uh, he he likes to use numbers for his his uh, his screen names and stuff. So he just, looks like a hacker. No, just, well, that's the thing, because if you look at a phone, like, it spells his name and it spells things that mean something to him. And I'm explaining why he's doing this. This is what hackers do. He's like, it's fine. It's okay. It's totally right. I'm like, people are going to think you're a hacker. And I think somebody even might have screamed at him in TeamSpeak about him being a hacker uh, the last time. But so we hooked him up with the system, and we installed PUBG, and we downloaded it, and we walked him through everything, and 
then started the out of work PUBG sessions. Shannon, would you care to continue? Or do yeah, you want sure. me to? Um, well, from there, one of the very first experiences, I decided to offer Alex a ride because I was driving the motorcycle. What were you driving? Motorcycle? Motorcycle. You know, one of the most stable, uh, one of the most stable vehicles in the game. Uh, apparently, it is. apparently driving through a field, uh, something decided to send the bike hurtling and me and him both with it. So we both got uh, put down. You know, you're not dead, but you can just crawl around. They come and pick him up, uh, Joe and I think Chad at the time, mm. pick us up. So I'm trying to heal. And I hear Alex say, hey, Shannon, look at this. I turn around, and there's a shotgun pointed at my face, and he killed me. I just hear a gunshot go off the distance, and I just see Shannon has been knocked out. What are you doing? Ah. That's what you get. You just drive that motorcycle terribly. You, you've got to be taught a lesson. You need to be taught a lesson. And then trying to explain to Alex how you heal somebody, and he's trying to get the mechanics down, Shannon just bled out and died right in front of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he watched it happen, and this is still kind of the running joke in the office is the fact that uh, basically the very first match we played, or I think it was, wasn't that, Alex, was that the first match we ever played? Yeah, yeah first very match first we one. ever played with Alex, and he killed me with a shotgun. Yeah. All because I crashed a damn motorcycle. Yep. And then on a separate occasion, uh, the last time we played, actually, it was me, you, Chad, and, and Alex. Uh, Alex and I were way off the mark where Chad and Shannon wanted to go. They were going to the low island. Joe, I, Joe, Chad, and I landed together. Alex fell a little short. I fell short. I fell short of you guys because yeah. you guys crossed the, the water. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to make that. Yeah, so I landed, military island. I landed right, right in front of um, my Alta Power. And Alex was like way off by like military. So Shannon, you're like, oh, you just go ahead and pick up Alex. I'm like, all right, no problem. So I'm, I'm running the road. I find a U.S. and I take it. Hold and on. I'm running. I'm just running, finding you as, and I get you as, and I get you as, and I start driving down the road. And I can see Alex on the map, and I'm coming. And, and here I am thinking, I'm, I'm like all, you know, Mr. Badass here. And I see Alex, and I hit like a bump, and the physics skew my car all the way to the right, and I can't control it at this point, and I run over Alex. And then as I go to pick up Alex, I try to move the car in reverse, I run him over again, and I murder him. So, so what did you do after that? Um, he well, com he committed some buku. Well, just saying. Well, before that happened, before buku, before I did that, I was profusely apologizing. And and uh, let me remind you that I haven't played a whole lot of video games with Alex yet, so I don't quite have a feel for like his gaming persona. Just dead silence as I'm like, Alex, I'm so sorry, man. It's the physics. It's the car. And then dead air. Like Al Al Alex, really? Like I didn't. Oh God, guys, I'm probably gonna get fired tomorrow. And then immediately here tomorrow. You're going to get fired now. You're going to get fired tonight. Okay, great. So feeling pretty bad and sorry for myself, I just drove the U.S. right off a cliff. And that's when Alex decides, no, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? No, 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 no. You didn't, why you, oh, now you're laying on the sand. Now you're laying in the water at some point. So um, that was a pretty fun occasion. So, yeah, we lost two Needless players to, say. to, to Joe uh, running over our CEO because apparently that's how you teach him to play PUBG is run him over twice. I... I at some point, I think that's not an accident anymore. Maybe self-consciously or subconsciously. Uh, you hear this, Alex, right? You hear that? Not I'm, I'm just it trying, wasn't an accident. I'm just trying to it. analyze the situation, I swear. Well, uh, I might be finding a new co-host next week, guys. Just saying. Uh, I might be replaced with the Tank of Ellen, too. Uh, well, it wouldn't be <laughs> Sifuku. <laughs> Travis is trying to correct my Japanese. Great. Right with what's, what's, what's Travis's term? What do we call Travis here? Uh, weeb. What? A weeb. Yeah, that, that, that works. Uh, How do you spell weave, Travis? Yeah, Travis. <laughs> yeah, Travis. <laughs> Poke you with a stick. <laughs> He's just going to stop. He, he put pretty sure the same scenario is why Ashley uh, won't play anymore, and that's not wrong because the first thing we did when my wife decided to play with us was we all shot her with a shotgun. Because that seemed like a good idea at the time. I, well, I remember the first time I played, I was just running out in, in South George out in the open. And you're like, uh, you're kind of brave, man. If you're running, like, why? What's the matter? <laughs> and how'd that work out? Um, Did they pick up part of you across the field? No, it was actually pretty good. I got a shotgun, and eventually we got to a bunch of yellow houses, and I ran the corner, and I saw somebody and just immediately jerk reacted and, and clicked the mouse button and shot him in the face. So that was that. Um, but just to kind of touch back on, on the subject of our CEO being better than yours, because he is, the fact that he even had an interest to game with us, like, who can say that? Who, well, can, who can say that you play video games with your CEO and not 
either A, out of obligation, or B, because uh, they feel like they need to make you happy as an employee. Or not because you feel, not because you, you play just because you feel like you like, I mean, I feel like a lot of people, they have that feeling like you have to kiss the CEO's ass and that's like, I feel like that is that feeling of, oh, we've got to give them everything and figure it out. And we've pretty much put Alex out there and let him figure out on his own kind of how to do things. We've walked him through some of the stuff, but all in all, he's gotten better and better as time has gone on. And the fact that he didn't just give up and go, oh, screw this, I don't like this anymore. That's a, that's a, that's a testament for like the ability for gaming and whatnot. In fact, um, I still see you like playing by yourself all the time. And Chad, we're just asking. Chad and I were just thinking last night, like, do you think maybe he just leaves the system in the lobby so you can just sit down and, yeah, that's smart. I mean, if I could build a dedicated PUBG machine, I'd probably do that. I think you already have one because that's all we pretty much play. Yeah. Besides trying Fortnite and realizing we wasted a lot of money. Um, Chad and I started downloading backup games for when PUBG goes down, and we both deleted Fortnite. That's not a bad choice. I mean, hell, I even tried Overwatch for the first time. I've had that game for like a year and a half, and I tried it. And I apparently it was so bad that my team voted they all stick together, but then booted me. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah. Well, because nobody wanted to be support. So I was stuck being healers because nobody else wanted to do it. Everyone wanted to be the tank or the offense or the defense. And I'm stuck being a healer, so I'm doing something that I really didn't care to do. But you have to because the whole point of Overwatch is teamwork, right? Oh, I love this. Uh, Chad's like, I never shot Ashley. Yeah, well, wait, maybe you didn't. Maybe it was John and them. I'm not sure. But either way, we murdered her, like, bad, and she, she won't even touch the <coughs> you game You can use that 8X, bro? Hey, Chad, you gonna use your 8X? Hey, you gonna you use it? You find a sniper rifle yet? You find anything to put that on? Do, do you, you still <laughs> looking for it? Can I have that 8X? <laughs> um, I'm out. There needs to be a, a written scope etiquette in PUBG that you can ban people for, I think. I think I think I think they're I think they're trying to uh, I think they're trying to get the hook and kind of pull us off stage. Are, are we ending now? What's up? Ah, we got to end, guys. I know we ran a little longer, but you know what, guys? We have a lot more we kind of want to take a look at, and well, QQ, we're gonna have to look at it uh, next week. I think. I think next week PS4 is entering its which we end of talked days. End of days. Yeah, PS4, so you want to put is dying. You want to put your PS4 in a blender with some pizza and some well, beer and some milk from the it's night. A, it's a very slow death. It's not to like 2020. So relax. so it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger if, and Terminator 2 getting the, real down. Disclaimer: into the We're not water. responsible if you decide to put your PS4 in a blender because that's dumb. Oh, I'm fully responsible. You shouldn't put your PS4 in a blender. I'm I'm out. I can't. Nope. Other than that, we've got some. Uh, you know, discuss some net neutrality. The fact that uh, past Senate, you know, we might actually be able to save our internet. Maybe. Either at, or Although, you, might have, you might have to pay like a $30 premium just to watch this. This so, this, this may saying. foil Elon Musk's plans, though. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, Chad Chad made a very good point. Maybe this is something we've got to do. Uh, he said, uh, you all need to work on two-hour streams. An hour is not enough. Alex, the audience has spoken. The audience has spoken. Alex is over here laughing at us. He's like, knock it off. So and so, I guess we can continue to do the two thirty streams every day, and we okay. will, and four thirty, and we uh, will keep the same slot, regardless of what happens, rain or shine or conflict. Two thirty to four thirty. Maybe we might have to start breaking out to a gaming stream. Have one that's a tech stream. Have one that's a gaming. We stream. should, and, and we should break it up. What I would love to start doing in our sessions, because I kind of feel like, uh, especially in forms of entertainment, there's only so much you can do just sitting here and talking about stuff. Yeah. Eventually, especially with a two-hour stream, that excites me because there's we could break that up into segments. We could do a talking segment. We can do a gaming segment. We could do a what can we do with Screw Shannon this week segment. You know, maybe oh, with some great. spiders. No, you know? no, I'm, I will not show up for that. I will be out sick. We have some. I'm putting that out front. I will be out sick. So, so what we'll do is we'll just set up like, hey, Shannon, I'll be right back in your mission. I'm just going to go use the bathroom, and then I'll just drop a spider down the table, run and lock you in the room. Okay, we're in a new building. Do you really want me to Kool-Aid man through drywall? Just I saying, mean, I will literally Kool-Aid man through wall. You can Kool-Aid man through any wall you want, and I will pay the expense as long as the moment you bust through that wall, you go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, and just like that. And other than that, guys, we're going we're gonna to have to close this out here, so... Thank you for joining us. Yes, uh, thank you very much for watching. We appreciate you know, all the questions that you guys give us every week and the topics that you give to us that really make it really dynamic and, and almost a little bit challenging, too. Just remember, guys, we do have a lot of cool bundles going on, so uh, be sure to hit us up, and we'll build a killer machine here for you to uh, uh, get some cool games to go with it and get some things going. Yeah, we had, Travis actually built a really killer machine the other day. It looked like we cooled one. It was blue and red. That okay. thing was. That was one. That was one killer machine. I, yeah, I like that a lot. Absolutely was. You know, I think we should build even more killer machines in the future. What do you guys think? Do you guys think? Uh, just as a closing thought, you know, leave it in the comments. Message us. I'm sure Brooke would love it if you blew up the inbox on her Facebook because she doesn't have sure enough to do. So just please pile it on. 
please don't say that. Then I'm gonna have to hear her tell me about how we should not have said that because then she's gonna she's gonna tell us why she have three thousand messages. But if you guys think you know what, um, we've uh, made our business out of out of out of the last fifteen years of building servers, workstations, all that stuff for like amazing people like what we worked with yesterday with Boeing and things like that. We've done some really cool stuff with them. We're really working hard on. Uh, establishing ourselves with some of the awesome gaming builds we do. If you guys think, you know what, that gaming is a strong point we should really be looking at building awesome systems for you guys and showing them off, please let us know. Maybe we'll uh, have a defined focus on specifically gaming. Otherwise... I think that'd be great, personally. Yeah, but you're not our audience. But you I'm work a, here. But I'm a gamer and I'm a consumer. I think everything we do is great because I work here. Well, no, I don't think everything that we do is great. I mean, I'm not huge into like little nooks and I'm not huge into small form vector systems. If you want to talk about quality of work, sure, hands down, no problem. I wouldn't work anywhere else if I didn't believe that to be true. But gaming, I mean, we have so much that we do with gaming we offer that it's, it's hard to be able to fit on one page. I mean, we could create an entirely separate faction of that if we wanted to. And one more thing is, we had a good question. Uh, Delano says, will AVA be using wooden crates to ship, or at least an option to? We can look at that. That's actually something we absolutely can do. Negative. I am a meat popsicle. And with that, thanks for joining us, guys. This is Shannon. This is Joe. And we look forward to next week, where you can join us here at uh, 2.30 Eastern Time, and we will probably go over again and get yelled at for it. See you next week. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs>